If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know that I've been swapping clusters in and out of my truck. In doing so, I've swapped in clusters that never read the right speed. Here's a clip of me driving when I realized something was way off. As you can see, my speedometer was reading 80, but the GPS on my phone was reading 70. I did get lucky though. I posted some work that I had previously done on the cluster on a subreddit called Project Car. If you haven't checked it out, you should check it out. It's really cool. And a user, Slim underscore Jehe, mentioned that he had done the same thing and that he had also done a dip switch setup that would allow him to calibrate his speedometer when he changes tire sizes. I didn't know about it before, so I looked into it. He provided a link to an old forum post that turned out to be pretty useful. I'll provide it and some other links in the description. After doing a bit of research, I found out that you can create a cluster that will work in any early GMT 400 truck. I have now made two of those clusters and I'm going to show you how I did it. The first thing I had to do was remove the cluster and take out the circuit board. I detailed the steps involved in this when I replaced my bulbs with LEDs. I'll post a link here, but if you miss it, you can also find it in the K1500 playlist. With the circuit board removed, you can see these seven green fuses that are used to calibrate the speedometer. When the early GMT 400 trucks were being built, they would blow a combination of fuses that corresponded to a rear end ratio and a tire size. I don't know exactly how this works, but I do know the GM used a table that would match rear end ratio and tire sizes with which fuses needed to be blown. I'll post a link to the table so that if you want to use it, you can download it. To make the cluster work with any setup, you can replace the seven fuses with a seven position dip switch setup. It'll have 14 pins that you can solder directly to the board. So when you flip the board over, it is these that need to be desoldered and the dip switch will be connected here and here because if you look closely at the traces this this row here and this row here is connected top and bottom so when you put the dip switches in connecting one row of the switch here and the other row of the switch there um, you essentially have well you will have the same configuration so that's what I need to do now is desolder these fuses out. I do need a new soldering tip, but this one should get me by. Let's see. I've used it in other videos, but for those of you who aren't familiar, that tool with the white tip is a desoldering tool. It sucks up solder that has started to flow so that you can remove a component from a board. So I'm going to flip it and lightly tug on these leads to see if I have removed enough solder to free them. Not on that one so much, but that one's coming up. That one. That one. Come on, come on. Damn gummit. Close. So I got six of the seven. With one side of the fuse free, I could flip the board over, get the solder flowing again, and that will allow me to push on the lead that is still connected, and that'll make it come out a lot easier. All right, now that those are free, there is one more area I need to desolder, which is this area here. Um, I don't know why they do this. It might've been because of the size of the fuses, but this area connects to this, to where these were. So I need to desolder these enough such that the dip switch pins can go through here.
easy enough. I just touched the soldering iron to it and it made the holes. You can see it there. So now this isn't the best soldering job, but it worked last time. So hopefully it'll work this time as well. I ordered two types of dip switches because I didn't know which kind I would like the best. But as it turns out, I like this kind on the right the best because it's easy to see when it is switched. However, I may use this if I ever do it again because I can just poke in and out to make the switches be on or off rather than pushing left or right like on these. So you want them aligned starting with one at the top going up in number. Boom. Easy enough. So I'm going to hold it with my finger, flip it over, and bend a couple of tabs to hold it in. Then I'll lay it down and bend the rest of them. All right, so now that it's held in, I could lay it down and bend the rest of them. All right, so now we solder it in. All right, so that row is all connected. Need to be a little more careful on this row, this next one, because they are not connected. I definitely need to step up my soldering iron game. All right, those are not good joints. Let me take a look at them. I'm gonna see if I can get these to flow a little better. Yeah, I might be just making it worse. But that's good enough to test. So let's see. So with them all switched to on, every single one on this side should have continuity to that side. So with them all on, Every single, every single one on this side, top to bottom, should have continuity to this side. So I will select here and just go down the line. All right, so now I'm gonna flip it over and turn them all off. So now, None of them should have continuity to the other side. All right, so far so good. And just as to check one more thing, they should not be in contact with each other. So I'm just gonna walk down the line. One to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six, six to seven. And I was concerned about one, two, three, four, five, making contact to the pin it needed to. So I will select five, and trace it to here. All right, so that's good. There you have it. And that is exactly what I did to the one that is in the truck and it works. So I'll just keep this in the parts bin in case the one that's in the truck has any issues, but there you have it. 
So for my truck, which has a 342 rear end and 265, 75, 16 tires, I need to turn off switches one, two, three, four, and five. And my speedometer should be set. After I modified the first one, I installed it and went on a test drive. I know it's not perfect, but I compared it to the GPS speed and they were pretty much dead on. So it looks like it worked. While I was out driving the truck after making the speedometer modification, I got a question about one of my previous videos. It's the video where I upgrade one of the early GMT 400 wiper motor and board setups for the later one. And a quick note is that I did not swap out the switch. I'm still using the original switch. I only swapped in the motor and board. So here it is. I had a question about the wiper upgrade and if it works at all settings. So I'm gonna try and show all the settings it works at. So this is my old switch. I'm gonna turn it up one click. So that's one click. This is two clicks. Hold on, I think I'll... Right. One click, two clicks. Three clicks. So I'm gonna let it go twice. So boom and boom. Four clicks. Five clicks. Six clicks. Seven clicks. And that's it. Now I'm going to take it all the way back down. So that's all the way back down. And I'm going to do a reverse click. Boom. That's just one. So if you have questions on whether the new style board and motor work. I hope that answers it. This truck still needs tons of work. If you'd like to follow along as I continue to improve it, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.